Hey guys, Henning and Morten here from Flip Normals. And in this extremely elaborate video, we are going to talk about 3D softwares, specifically which software, which 3D software for games, VFX, animation is the best to use, <laughs> the absolute best one. <laughs> There's a spoiler here. There is not a specific one that's going to be turning out to be the best. But we want to cover the most basic and the, all the used tools that are in the different industries, yeah. why you should or shouldn't be using those tools, and ultimately, can they land you a job? Yeah. So, so we're hopefully going to have a fairly balanced and uh, fair discussion here where yeah. we don't rage too much about certain software. <laughs> and <laughs> Obviously, I, I like to put a little disclaimer in there and saying there are certain softwares that we know more about because yes. those are the ones that we're using day to day. Um, there are certain softwares that we've touched before. Yeah. Uh, maybe we work with them for a few weeks to a few months or so. So our knowledge might not be as in depth for those, but I still think our opinion on those and, and the field that we work in is very valid. Yeah. So the software we're going to cover in this one, just to give you a little heads up, would be 3D Studio Max, Maya, Blender, Houdini, Cinema 4D, Modo, and then we have ZBrush, and then we have Substance Painter and Designer and Mari. Mm. So it's a fairly balanced look at, at the major packages that are out there and being yeah. used in the different industries right now. There's probably smaller softwares and Maybe some people might be a little angry that we're not covering specific <laughs> softwares, but but these are primarily the tools that if you want to get into, if you want to work in commercials, uh, visual effects, games, just animation, whatever yeah. it might be, either some of these tools you're definitely going to be touching. Yeah. So some of these, like Morton said, are, are major software, like Max and Maya, and then we have some more specialized stuff like ZBrush. Like you can't just be a ZBrush artist. Well, maybe you can, but you yeah. probably have <laughs> knowledge of, of some different ones. Yeah. Otherwise, you become what we call a ZBrush cowboy. Oh, you don't want to be a ZBrush cowboy. No, you don't want to do that. Trust us, it's, uh, it's not a good look. <laughs> no. So let's start off with this 3D Studio Max here. We, we just go, go into all the various websites here, and we're just briefly just showing you what yeah. they are about. So, uh, so Max is uh, one of the, the most used software out there today, and it's made by Autodesk, along same, same as Maya is as well. And this is this is the first software both Mort and I actually started with. Oh, like ten? Oh, what was it? Ten? Ten years? Ago? Twelve? I think it's twelve years ago now. Oh, Time dang. passes quickly now, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's early days, and it's it's really a, it's really a fantastic tool in a lot of ways. I know a lot of you, you guys will think that it's kind of a crap because you use it and <laughs> use it every single day but but it can do most things here and it's a fairly efficient modeler and you have amazing plugin support for so many different things that's one of the main strengths of max yeah, yeah. if you want something for it there is a plugin for it i was talking to a friend of mine who he wanted to populate like a bookshelf and there was a plugin for books in a bookshelf <laughs> you know there are there's just support for everything here i think one of the cool things when i started using it was there's, uh, at some point after I, I started modeling a little bit, I, I thought, man, I'd really like to get into some particles. And mm. I started researching particles. Then you had uh, thinking particles. You had implementations for Krakatoa. Yeah. So you could you could just, you could do all those things. There's been really good support for render engines yes. um, for 3D Studio Max. There's just a, it's a, it's just a really well-balanced tool. Yeah. One of my favorite things about Max was the modifier list. So mm, the modifier stack, the modifier stack, yeah. yeah, where you have essentially you have access to everything you can apply to an object in in that list. Uh, in the beginning, I would say it probably it might be a little bit overwhelming, but as you got used to it, not having that in other software actually kind of annoyed me a bit because mm. I knew all the things. I went through every single modifier just to try all of them out. You had some weird ones was like. You could melt your objects, but <laughs> yeah, you super had a, useful. <laughs> you had amazing ones as well as like uh, the Turbo Smooth one, where Turbo Smooth you could turn on a wireframe and you could mm. choose the subdivision level interactively. Uh, here's an amazing screenshot oh, of, yes. uh, of Max. Which which is which version of this? I have is? no idea. Anyway, but this is the basic. This is basically what Max looks like now. Yeah. I guess this is a little old, maybe a few years old or so. But yeah. essentially, this is what it looks like here. Yeah. So super useful software can do most things. It's used a lot in games now. So Max and Maya, they're 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 both used here. But if you are in gaming, it's probably worth learning Max. Definitely. I used to. I used to actually used to use it for uh, like architectural visualization mm. as well. That's that's how I got started with 3D, and 
one of the nice things about Max was the precision tools. Like it was really precise. Mm, yeah. Uh, you, you measure things up and you know put it into into your into your scene, get a quick render out and present it to the client really quickly. Yeah. So it was super handy for that. Uh, next up, let's look at Maya. So Maya is by far in film the most used tools, like mm -hmm. like undisputed. If you want to work in film visual effects, most commercial studios, Maya is the top dog here. This is this is where we we model, uh, we UV map, rig, and animate, render everything in in Maya. That is, like there is no discussion here. If you want to work in film. Maya is is really the place to go. Same with, same goes with uh, you know just uh, animation, feature animation. Yes. Most most studios also will use Maya for that. Yeah. It's the nice thing about Maya is that it's so customizable. Yes. It's it's a hundred percent customizable. You could make Maya your own. I guess. Yeah. There might be restrictions to what you can change in the core files, but write a plugin, Python script stuff. Um, have a have an actual binary plugin yeah. that that you write to to Maya. It can do anything yeah um you know has also support for particles they recently introduced some some motion graphic stuff in there as well so that's also yeah. really powerful yeah, like now. look at this entire list here like yeah like all the shelves here so we have maya we, we're not showing a screenshot of maya because we use maya a lot this is where <laughs> we're sitting day to day so we have yeah. maya here so maya can just do a whole bunch of stuff and uh it's not particularly easy to use, I think, <laughs> to learn. Sorry, compared to some of the other software out there, but it's but it's super powerful. And if if you're interested in 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 film, like it's not it doesn't matter if it's easy to use or not. You just gotta mm. you just gotta learn. Yeah, I mean, there's when I first switched from Max to Maya, I got I was very frustrated because yeah. it just it was different. I guess yeah. it, like it, when it comes down to it, they can do the same things. Yeah. I would still say though that I think, in my opinion, Maya is a more powerful tool mm. just because of the customization yes. and the, the ease of use. Of it. You have Max script and Max where you can write some things, but Python is just a more used language. I more people I actually know. believe they've added Python to Max. Oh, now. really? Yeah, That's I think cool. So. Okay. So, the, so it's been a few years since we used Max. So, <laughs> so keep in mind if, if some of the information is old, just correct us in the yeah. comments. But uh, yeah, I, I believe Max. That's cool. Python That's support. super cool then. So Maya phenomenal tool. Uh, one of the cool things about having about both Max and Maya is that as they're two of the most used tools out there, there is an insane amount of training. Like if if you want to learn them, there is no reason to go to university or anything like that to learn technically how to use these mm. tools. You can learn that probably from free through YouTube or just some introduction courses at various websites out yeah. there. There is so much training out there. I mean, for it. Yeah, that, that's because those are, I would say, the most dominant softwares. That's what most tutorials, most guides yeah. are written for. The same with support. If you want to do anything in Max or Maya, Google your problem, and most certainly someone has already asked that question. Yeah, yeah and there's going to be a script for it and all yeah, of that. Yeah. So uh, with both these, uh, with both Max and Maya, they're fairly expensive tools. So it, if you're a, if you're um, a hobbyist or something like that, you're not going to be able to afford that. They have a free trial, and if you are um, if you're a student, you have access to it for free. Mm. You just you can download it for completely free if you're a student. I guess uh, Maya they recently introduced the LT version, yes. which is a more downgraded version of Maya that does yes. most of the things that you need it for. Yeah, at least in the beginning. At least in the beginning. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So um, yeah, uh, definitely check these out if you're if you're interested in if you're interested in a commercial side of 3D, like getting a job for it. I would I would recommend learning Max or Maya for yeah, this. That's they, the main tools. They they are a lot of people talk about different softwares and well, I can do 3D. Why can't I get a job with this? It's yeah. th what it comes down to is what does the studio use? Yes. And studios use Max and Maya. Yeah. A lot of studios do. So yeah. depending on which field you want to get into, but also like. The more and more studios are starting to use Maya for games, like mm. some of the higher end studios, yeah. they're definitely using Maya for games as well. So it, it also depends on the studio, I suppose. Yeah. And then uh, with this said, let's look at uh, Blender. So mm. Blender is a fantastic 3D tool in pretty much every single way. Like it's, it can do crazy stuff. It can do pretty much the exact same thing as Maya can, and it's completely free. This is an open source project which has been going on for ages mm. now. I mean, I'd even argue that that Blender is more powerful than Maya, just because it's such a, it's an even more complete package. Like there's <laughs> yeah. even more things in there. You, I yeah. mean, you because like you have you have basically ZBrush integrated into Blender. Yeah. You have uh, Nuke integrated into Blender. Yeah. Uh, video editing. You can do. It's it basically unlimited what yeah. you can do with Blender. 
Yeah, it's a very, very powerful tool. I remember I haven't used Blender a lot. I've used it a bit, mm. uh, but my what I primarily used it for was I did some modeling stuff, but mm. but I also did UVing. The UVing tools they're excellent in my yeah. now, but the the unwrapping algorithm and how to cut your UVs that was excellent to do in Blender. Yeah, I remember. We even have an old tutorial on how to do it, how to do UV That's mapping right. in Blender. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. years back. So with all this said, though. Why aren't everyone using Blender? Well, the reason is no, none of the studios are. Yeah, now we might get comments from some Blender guys here being like, yeah, but this studio uses sometimes. No studio uses Blender, guys. Like, as a main thing, yeah. nobody uses Blender as their primary thing. I think it's a, it's obviously a shame, and yes. you, might be, you might be the best Blender artist out there, but getting a job in, I don't know, let's call it mainstream VFX animation yeah. games. CG. You might be hard pressed to find a studio that uses yeah. Blender. You might find a studio that will accept you using Blender. Yes. That's totally possible. Absolutely. But for the majority of the pipelines out there, that's just not the case. And for every studio which allows you to use Blender, there's going to be one which doesn't, because yeah, uh, you, yeah, because you can't really you can't really install at least in big studios you can't really install your own software because if you were allowed to everything will go crazy because people would install all kinds of junk. So I'm not saying Blender is junk, but it just means you can't install anything like at all. So you it, might be able to request because it's free to use yeah. open source, all that. that. That's definitely a possibility. But don't don't bank on that. No. Like I highly recommend if you're interested in in getting in, in making money off of 3D that you don't just use Blender, that you that you get a solid understanding of the other software mm -hmm. as well. I mean, it's totally fine that you do most of your stuff in Blender and then just, you just export it to Max or Maya for yeah, pipeline yeah. integration and all that. But no major studio will be using Blender as their, as their uh, primary you, you thing. Run in, you run into the issue where some people are specialized in a tool that, let's say, modeling packages or whatever, let's say it's Blender, that are specialized in that tool and don't actually know the main package that the yeah. studio is using, they are going to be so disruptive to the pipeline yes. because all of a sudden the studio has to accommodate an like a, an artist that's supposed to be able to work independently. All of a sudden they need someone to integrate their models into the pipeline or do things do that basic things exactly. And, and in the pipeline, I mean, I know we're very pipeline focused here, but that's because that's our that's that's how we that's our take on it. Yeah, we we seen that that. People want to maybe use Modo or Blender for their modeling, but a lot of times you're not doing your model from scratch. You take mm -hmm. a model and it is already published in Maya, and now you want to have to export everything to Blender, and that's such a mess. And you have to export everything back to it. And there are tons of proprietary tags which are, are just added to the models. That. Yeah, so, you might have a lot of dependencies that can only be read in that specific yes. software that the studio is using. So if you, if you, if you, this, this is the same with Modo as well. We'll get to this later. You really have to use something else. And and there are tons of fantastic short movies made in Blender, like Sintel and uh, Big Buck Bunny, I think mm. it's called, oh, which yeah. are they're just lovely movies, and they look fantastic, and they wouldn't be any better if they were made in Maya. But... Yeah, we did. We just. I feel. I feel we've gone over this now. You are not getting a job as a Blender artist, most likely. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you were to set up your own studio, or if there is a studio that does use Blender, then that that's awesome. Absolutely, because it's such a powerful tool. Absolutely, There's, I have nothing against Blender as a tool, really. One of the one of the key points about Maya and and Max as well, as opposed to Blender, is it's just that it, let's say you are starting your own studio, you are gonna have a hard time finding artists for your job. Like, yeah. how many Maya animators can I think of at the top of my head? Like, you know, there are like forty. Like right away, how many you know can light and all that? Right, and you can just you can give them a computer and they can just start working. Day one. <laughs> Day one. Yeah. If if you if you need to crew up quite a lot and your main tool is Blender. I mean, you're gonna have to spend realistically at least a few weeks just to, for them to be able to pick it up. Yeah. Because Blender is very different in compared to Maya and Max. Max is Max and Maya are fairly similar. You can have the same navigation, and it's made by the same company, so a lot of things are fairly similar. Well, Blender has a whole different way of working, like different hotkeys, different navigation models, etc. So. I mean, you guys should always change that. It's not yes. bad, but um, it's just you might be hard pressed. Yeah, that's what we're saying. So it's just some Blender up, fantastic tool. It's free. Nothing at all bad to say about the tool itself. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. It's just not used commercially no. a whole lot. And then we have Houdini. 
Houdini is un- is used commercially. <laughs> is used commercially, yeah, and it is an absolute beast of a software. Yeah. So this this is also one of the main main three D software. You can do most things in this. You can do your modeling, animation, rigging, rendering, all that kind of mm. stuff. But where Houdini shines is anything to do with effects, like. It is the king of effects here, and in all studios I've, I've worked in, Houdini has been the main thing. They've had some proprietary things here and there, but it's generally all been Houdini. I think one of the, if I were to sum Houdini down, up, sum it up, not down, to like, and it has like, it has the, the one core strength that it has is its proceduralness. Yes. Everything is procedural. Yes. Everything is a node. Everything can be changed at any mm-hmm. point. You don't have construction history that you can delete the history and then all of a sudden you can't get back to that bevel you made on your model yeah. or you can't change that color of half the particles or whatever it might be yeah. it is procedural and it's amazing yeah you and and because recently they had a, had a massive update to their modeling tools and rigging tools yeah. for example which made it a lot more modeling and rigging friendly the deformation is a lot better now yeah. it's it's a it's an amazing tool but like Henning says Particles is where it really shines, yeah. or, or sim, you know, whether it's muscle sim or it's making explosions. Yeah. Most of the time you're probably... Making be- smoke, fire, yeah. anything to do with simulation is is, is amazing. <laughs> like, it is just the de facto tool yeah. in, in our industry here. So I would say that if you know how to use Houdini really well, you're set. Like, you, you are very sought after currently as an artist. It's not that you're guaranteed a job, but any artist who can use Houdini either as their primary tool yeah. or they have knowledge of Houdini that they use to supplement whatever they're doing, yeah. that is that is an, an incredibly amazing resource to have on your team yeah. because you can throw so many things at them. Yeah. It's, I had, a, I had a friend of mine who he was going to model like some destroyed glass I'm thinking, okay, you could do that. If you did in the Maya, cut it up like this here and there. Maybe there's some generators for it. He just chucked a plane into Houdini. He threw on like a noise generator and then like just projected that or whatever he did onto the model. But it wasn't set in stone. He would Mm. change the noise to change how the cracks would form. Like imagine doing those iterations by hand when you're modeling. And because it's all procedural, you can just change it. You go to daily, they go like, oh, we like the cracks that go out in this direction. As a regular modeler, you would now go home and cry. (laughs) Yeah, you would. But if you're using Houdini, you're like, okay, change, done. Yeah. So extremely powerful tool and would really highly recommend anyone getting into effects. Yeah. uh, To to just at least have a look at it. Yeah. So as a a warning, Houdini is hard to learn. Mm. Like this is... Uh, this is this is harder to learn than my I'd say, uh, but it's also a lot more powerful in at least in like we're gonna say it's so it's so procedural so you can do anything in it. I wouldn't say currently that I would replace this Maya. No. Like if I were to build a pipeline today, I would probably I probably set up everything modeling animation wise in Maya, uh, rigging as well, and then I would do maybe the rest in Houdini. Like you you can also render stuff there as well, and it's really powerful. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if. Five ten years down the line, if 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 Houdini continues the way it is now, mm. that it could potentially replace yeah. Maya. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's just such a powerful tool, and it's very by nature, it's completely different yeah. from Maya or Max, yeah, for is. example. You and can, it's sure as hell not going anywhere. Like no. this is not one of these horses going to be there. Or not. Like this is <laughs> it already has a firm grasp grasp of the industry. Like it's and it's just getting better and better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So next next up, let's look at Cinema 4D. As a Ooh. disclaimer here. Neither Mort and I have really used Cinema 4D a whole <laughs> lot, so this is going to be a fairly quick one. Yeah. But this is also one of the major 3D software in the way that it, it can do most things here. But the main strength of Cinema 4D is by far the motion graphics part of it. Like yes. if if you were starting out with, uh, if, if you were to do like modeling, texture, animation, general 3D things, effects, all these things, I would not be looking at Cinema 4D. I would be looking at Cinema 4D if I was a smaller studio or major, doesn't matter, but a studio which is doing a lot of motion graphics. Yeah. So you can you can do this by by checking out their showreel. So we can we can check out uh, Cinema 4D's showreel here, and we can just see that most of the stuff they have is is very different from what you can do what you what you see in the reel from Max, Maya, Houdini, all that. This is way more motion graphics and super cool stuff. 
and it, it's definitely really strong at at this. I would say also, as like Kenny mentioned, as a, as a smaller studio or maybe as a freelancer, Cinema 4D is maybe the perfect tool for you mm. because when you do as a freelancer like this you might be doing a lot of commercials mm. so there's a lot of procedural stuff that you could do with uh, with cinema 4d that just makes your job really easy yeah. or at least a lot quicker yeah um still it's uh, as expensive as the other packages <laughs> yeah. so it's not bad but it's definitely an amazing an amazing software yeah it really is so like we said, we haven't used this a whole lot. We just know Cinema 4D is a really cool tool, mm -hmm. mostly used for motion graphics today. Like you wouldn't probably see it as much in bigger studios, maybe for motion graphics, but yeah. not as a, let's say, as a modeling or no, rendering no. To, in the pipeline. That's, I've never seen it in any, any major studio. No, no. So that just, just, you know, again, with, with the other packages, just keep in mind and think about which profession that yeah. you're that you're applying for what the studio is you would always inquire yeah. for, from the studios like well what are the packages that 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 you use yeah so they might not come back to you but <laughs> i mean you would hope they would <laughs> so next up let's look at moto so moto is something i've been using now for like 11 years this this was uh, uh this was my second 3d software and the first one i really fell in love with this was this was pretty much the reason i started doing 3d because back in 2006 i think that was when i started mm. 12 years ago 3D was really hard. It was a very different field than it is today in a way that there was a lot less training. If you didn't have uh, Flip Normals on YouTube, <laughs> you didn't even have YouTube. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> it was so early on. So there was not a whole lot of training and it was just a lot harder to learn. So, well, Moto was, Moto was like a breath of fresh air. It was, it was a lot easier to use and it had a, it had a lot of different ways of, of using, of doing 3D. And it's still being developed today. Like it's actively being developed by the Foundry. Yeah. And um, it's up to version 11 now. Super cool software. It can. It's not a major 3D software, and it cannot compete with Maya as a pipeline tool. Not even close to it. Uh, Modi was started as a modeler, and then they introduced a rendering engine to it. So it's very good if you want to do those things. Mm -hmm. If you want to do like high level rigging effects, some kind of simulation, or generally just do really high level CG, I would not use Moto for that. There are obviously examples to contradict that <laughs> because there is that for everything. But as a general rule, I, I wouldn't be using Moto as my primary tool. You know, this is the kind of stuff where it's fantastic at product shots, yeah. all these kind of things. It's super useful. I guess I remember when they added. Uh, like I don't, I don't know anything about Moto. I've used <laughs> it for maybe half an hour. Yeah, you, you, uh, you see me use Moto a lot. <laughs> exactly, and it's what, one of the things that really impressed me about about Moto is the the speed at which you can render things, like yes. with the iterative render, yeah. which is like do something, model some things, yeah, put on a shader. The preview render is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I would say the preview render is probably strongest in the entire industry. You can just do so many cool things with that, and it's. That was pretty much the first time I used preview rendering. Before you had to, you had to um, render all the time, just do test renders. But now you had interactive rendering, which is fantastic. So you can do like sculpting and texturing and all that. This is not replacing. <laughs> Ma this is not replacing ZBrush or Mari in any way. But the rendering is the render engine is super nice. I I personally prefer to use Arnold today. Uh, we're not getting into Arnold, but um. I, I find I find the the motor render engine just be really really good in general. So tons of cool stuff in Moto. And you could do rigging and animation. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah yeah I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it for for these kind of things. The deformation system is still rather slow compared to something like Maya, and also like what we talked about before as well. You're not going to find good Moto animators for this kind of stuff. No. Modo is fantastic in a way that it's also relatively easy to learn compared to the other software. Uh, modeling is super fast and and very artist friendly. So I, I recommend Modo for maybe if you're a modeler or if you are a smaller studio or if you're a freelancer. It's like the perfect freelancer tool in a mm. way because you can just get very you can get a fairly high quality very quickly. It's like 
this might be a bit controversial, but I would say that Moto is is fantastic if you want to get up to like 80% in quality really, really quickly. You can get it up to 80% a lot faster than you can in my I'd say. But if you want to go for 100%, and 100% I mean you win the Oscar for best VFX. <laughs> like, or you know, like it, it looks completely photoreal and yeah. you're, you're able to fool the human eye. But if... And if you're not going for that, I would say Moto is fantastic. If you are, I would say I would say something like Maya, Houdini, Max, mm. something like that. Use another tool. Yeah, <laughs> probably use another tool. There's a screenshot from Moto 3 or 2. <laughs> this is this is super, such an old version, but it looks the same. Very nice, friendly interface here. Uh, very artist-friendly. So um, there has been a reason I've been using Moto for quite some time, though I find myself using Maya more and more. Mm. As when I started with, with the Moto, Moto was objectively better at modeling than Maya. But uh, yeah, I mean, when I get into 3D, I downloaded a trial of Moto. I mean, I never installed it, <laughs> but I, I definitely downloaded a trial. But so Morton has a lot of experience with Moto. <laughs> with downloading trials. <laughs> so you need any help, just ask about, <laughs> just ask about that. So yeah, that, that pretty much sums up Moto. Moto is like, it's cheaper than Max, but it's it's not a terribly, it's not an incredibly cheap tool anymore. So like I said, I, I'm using more and more Maya just because Maya and Max have just improved a lot mm -hmm. recently. So next up we have ZBrush. Okay, uh, this is a, uh, I think, I, I would like to put a disclaimer out there like we talked about, uh, this is the whole like ZBrush being a ZBrush cowboy and that kind of stuff. It is possible to only do work when you only do ZBrush. Yes. If you're in a pipeline, you're working in real production, like a real person, <laughs> I would highly suggest that you learn another software package as yes. well, because otherwise you will be, it's not that you're useless to the production, it's just that you can slow people down. Significantly. If you don't know a real 3D software, yeah. then you're not as useful as someone who does. And as an example, t t to know if you are a Seabrush Cowboy, if we say read topology and you go see your measure, yeah. then you are a Seabrush Cowboy. Then like, you need to yeah. get your stuff sorted out. Yes. <laughs> like there are there are tons of really, really good use cases mm -hmm. of, of Seabrush. Seabrush is a fantastic tool here. And and honestly, that's probably the tool Morton I sit most in at work as well. Yeah. It's and By we've far. been we've been using it for so long now. But it, it's it's not it's not the only tool you need to use. If you no, if it, you are using if you're if you want to be a a, a well-rounded three D artist, you have to learn something else than just ZBrush. Like it's it's nowhere near good enough to to be a main software. There are some guys who render in it and do all the kind of things in it, but can't do that in production. <laughs> you're not no like. The latest Transformer movie is not rendered <laughs> in here. <laughs> that being said, though, ZBrush is an insanely powerful tool. Yes. It is by far the best sculpting tool, in my opinion. I, my would, say, opinion. I would say objectively. Object Let's say objectively. Let's just take the opinion of everyone in the world and say it's the best <laughs> sculpting tool in the world. Yeah. ZBrush is amazing for sculpting. Yes. It's... It had the the feel of ZBrush. I feel like it's unmatched. Yeah. Like you can't, you don't get that same feel anywhere else. Yeah. And in terms of the features, it is crazy feature rich. I would say it's too feature rich. Yes. It can do too many things. But <laughs> yeah. if you just worry about the sculpting, you are definitely set. I mean, you have other things that you can do in here as well. You can do texturing with. Uh, you have the light box. Yeah. Uh, it, which is you know it totally works if you have. Just a simple project that you want to, yes. like, really... Like, I mean, you could try and do a photorealistic thing with it, but it's just going to be a... Not really recommended. Not but recommend, it's good yeah. for simple texture painting. Uh, we might get hate from this as well, but um, but it's not a texture painting tool as a main thing. No. Uh, th th this guy here, uh, Mr. Ferdinand, uh, from our other video as well, he uh, he was sculpted completely in ZBrush and then retopologized in Moto. <laughs> Important to say, this is not zero mesh topology here. There is literally no way. I would. I'm going on a limb here. Mm -hmm. I would. I would challenge anyone to get this kind of topology using only zero mesh. Can't do that. I mean, yeah. Do you? Uh, here's the thing, though. This is how I used to retopologize. You can. You can do manual topol retopology yes. in ZBrush. Yes, you can. It's uh, not. Is, I don't know if it's tricky, it's just uh, strange, so but it's, it's definitely possible. Yes. Um, so you can do all of that in terms of your modeling, you can do all that yeah. in 
um, in ZBrush. Yeah. They even added the new Z modeler features. Yeah. It's really powerful for modeling. I will say though, I don't think as many people have said, oh, it's going to replace uh, traditional modeling. It's not. It's not. No. You can't rely, you can't get a job as a modeler. No. Modeling in just ZBrush. I mean, ZModeler is amazing. Yeah. It's such a powerful tool, especially for hard surface. But I would be hard pressed to like you come into the studio and be like I don't know Maya but I can model everything in ZBrush. I yeah. mean I would be super impressed if you could do that. Yeah, if you could do it. But if you say that I'm going to be like you can't. <laughs> and if, and then it, the evidence burden is on you to disprove it and yeah. I'm not seeing anyone who can do that. So example here like th this is a, maybe a bit outside the scope of this but like you see how all these these scales here are in topology and they're in super clean topology. This here is yeah this is impossible to do in uh, in ZBrush uh, by itself. But so ZBrush is a fantastic tool in a way that it's the best sculptor out there. Mm -hmm. Like it is by far the best sculpting application out there. Yes. And it's it's dynamic and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff in it. So if you are interested in digital digital sculpting, get ZBrush. There is, like the alternative is Mudbox, and Mudbox is dead. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason, unbeknownst to anyone in the world, <laughs> Mudbox just had an update after, what, four years? Yeah, like some I don't know. There might have been some minor updates, but they just uh, added uh, automatic tessellation. Yeah, like essentially like a different version of Dynamesh in Intuit. And so it came out of nowhere. So Mudbox, <laughs> Mudbox is a lot easier to use than ZBrush. Like it's significantly easier, but it's also a lot less powerful. Yeah, we're not specifically covering Mudbox just no. because it's... Ah, oh, the feel. So this is the best way I found to describe the difference between Seabrush and Mudbox. Mudbox literally feels like you're sculpting in mud. Yeah. It's like it's, it's this soft gooey stuff. Control. You can't really. We're using our hands here to describe it. You can't see this, <laughs> but we are using our hands. Oh, yeah, I'm waving my hand in front of the microphone. <laughs> so Seabrush is is just that is by far the king, undisputed king of sculpting of organic modeling. If mm. you're doing like Mr. Ferdinand here, or if you're doing. Uh, if you're doing like nature, rocks, trees, whatever, it's it's absolutely fantastic yeah. for that. Uh, it is hard to learn. Uh, we, we we recently introduced uh, had a video on um, on our YouTube channel, which is for beginners. It's like an hour long, and it's everything you need to learn about ZBrush. So yeah. please check that out. But it is it is very alien compared to most 3D software out mm -hmm. there. But it is, I mean, if you're a modeler. And you're into doesn't matter if you're into environments, if you're into characters. Yeah. You definitely need to pick up ZBrush. Yeah. It's just something you need to know. Yeah. It's yeah, power sure. and like the, the here, like they have s amazing like the insert meshes yeah. for doing. This is how I would describe it: is that it's also really good for doing um, organic hard surface. Like I feel like there's been a change yeah. in hard surface models after ZBrush was introduced. Like before, it was very rigid; it was all boxy. Now you have smooth curves and smooth surfaces with yeah. crazy inserts, and it has this very specific ZBrush organic hard surface feel to yeah, it. Yeah, like this, like that one, right? It's, it's a good mix of like you see the soft shapes here with the hard shapes. Yeah, doing this in other software might be really tricky. Yeah, but also getting a production model out of this is also really tricky. You would probably have to go in, read the apologize. Yeah by hand or something like that yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, don't um, don't read apologize with hard service with zero machine kids. Don't do I that. guess they added that uh, they have like a feature to like preserve things, but it's yeah. very inefficient. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we all we will also get hate because of this because we're <laughs> saying that you can't use it. You can use it for certain things, but the level we require is at least for our job is yeah. is high level. You need to control everything. But to sum ZBrush up, it's a fantastic tool for sculpting. It is really the standard for sculpting here. Uh, but you also need to learn something like Max or Maya, depending on what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're a game artist and you only know how to use ZBrush, you're not a game artist, you're a sculptor. <laughs> so you definitely need to learn that as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. So next up, we have Substance Designer. This is a tool I personally have not used whatsoever, so I'll give it over to Morton, Yay. <laughs> who has used it. <laughs> substance Designer is, I think, Substance, the package of Substance Painter and Designer, is probably my two favorite softwares that have sort of, let's say, not come out in recent years, but hit the limelight in recent years. Mm. Because they've been out for a while. I don't actually know how long they've been around for, but the, the updates that they've started to do to their tools just really makes it shine. So Designer by itself, uh, you don't have to use Designer or Painter in conjunction with each other, but it makes it more powerful. Designer by itself just allows you to create super, I wanna say hyper-realistic, really realistic materials 
that are you can make them titleable really easy. Mm -hmm. It's all procedural. It's kind of like when we're talking about Houdini. Yeah. You go in, you change one one little aspect of your material, and all of a sudden you have a completely different material. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really easy to work with in terms of generating masks for your objects, or sorry, your shaders, to get more variety when you then import it into something like Painter. It's, I think, anyone starting today doing modeling, texturing, getting into shading, lighting, and that kind of stuff, I would definitely recommend getting in, getting familiar with both uh, substance packages yes it's um i don't know how to explain it other than mari is a great technical tool yeah that can do anything with texturing substance uh, let's go with painter now is a more artistic art artist friendly tool yeah, i would say absolutely and combining the both painter and designer just makes you a more well-rounded texture artist. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, if you were interested in becoming a texture artist today or general three D artist, learn learn substance. If you're learning substance designer, this is fairly hardcore. Like mm -hmm. you see the graph here. You know that this is this is to make the materials. This is cool if you're interested in that. Yeah. Um, if you but if you if you if this is too hardcore for you. Yeah. Substance Painter. Yeah, it's like our with, next one. Like with Designer, you try to go back to that uh, tab there. Like the the node graph there might look pretty intimidating, yeah. and it, it it actually is. <laughs> but it, if it were to break down the material, right? You have just you have a shape. You might have two or three shapes that mm -hmm. you have as base shapes. You just draw out a triangle, or you generate it. Uh, if you have if you have one of those shape generators that are are in Substance in Designer. It's even more procedural because it's mm -hmm. not something you've drawn, right? Yeah. So you can always just change the seed value to make it different. You pop some noise in there, you merge a few things, crunch some 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 values, yeah. and then you overlay some color. All of a sudden, you have a material that is that rock. You have this. But you change two or three seed values, and all of a sudden, it look completely yeah. different. Yeah. So it is pretty hardcore. I would say getting into designer is hardcore. Yeah. Designer is not, I, I think it's user-friendly, but it's difficult to use. Yeah. Not because it's not user friendly, just because there's a lot of stuff you have to wrap your mind around. Yeah, but and then you do have this as a, a, a mm -hmm. as a replicable pattern. Yeah. If you were to sculpt this, this is hard. <laughs> and if you want to make ten versions of this, this this just takes time to do. Yeah. So designer is fantastic for that to create libraries yeah. of your things. And you can then take these substance materials. Uh, and import them as m smart materials into Painter, mm. which allows you to propagate your model with whatever material you just created, whether yeah. it's this rock uh, material or if it's a sort of like a car paint shader or whatever it is. Painter makes it really easy to just texture. It's yeah. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Then it's so, a really so fantastic tool. So Painter is an tool. actual texture paint painting yeah, application. Yeah, exactly. Like Substance is more about creating materials and authoring materials while well, painter you're actually painting yeah like if you it's directly on your 3d model yeah. you can see what you're doing it's all live yeah unlike mari which we'll get into in a bit mm -hmm. it's all you don't need nothing is stored in a buffer nothing is projected it's just live you can project yeah. it's not that you can't project but the base way of working with it is that you just paint yeah um i would say how you the most efficient way to use to use this is maybe you have a smart material and you've generated some, some yeah, like they mentioned here, you, you generate some smart masks that are based on maybe mm -hmm. curvature, maybe it's dirt. You know, from the dirt you can, or from the curvature you can generate a, a dirt mask yeah. that you can sort of erode away where, okay, here paint would be chipped off of your model, for example. So achieving realism in, in Painter is it's not easy, but it, they make it a lot easier, I would yeah. say. Yeah, I would say that one of the big differences. Now we have to talk a bit, a bit, Mar a bit about Mario as well because mm -hmm. they are fairly direct competitors. Substance is smart. It Ma is smart. Well, Mari is dumb, and I don't mean <laughs> dumb in a in a bad sense. I just mean dumb as in m Substance will set up a lot of stuff automatically for you. Yeah, you know, yeah. you'll like you can see here you have all these smart masks, smart materials, and all that, and. You can get something like not saying that this here is done fairly quickly, but you can get uh, you can get a first pass fairly quickly. Hell of a lot quicker than if you were doing Mari. Yes, that's for sure. Definitely, because here you can drag some presets up, and if you baked like, your your masks like uh, your cavity, your ambient occlusion, mm -hmm. curvature, all these kind of things, it will just look at maybe it would just look at the curve here and just break it up a little. If yeah. you're saying this is a rusty material or, or chipped material, it will just it will just add this like chipping on of the paint here. 
and you can get up to a fairly decent result very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you you put in the rest of the work, and you have a one hundred percent finished material yes. that you made in either you know you made in Painter. Yeah. And I would say you know traditionally, substance has been focused on the games industry. Yes. But in the past couple of years, trust me, they have made an insane effort yeah. to to adopt it to the visual effects industry. Yeah. You know, they meet with companies regularly to discuss things, how to improve it, yeah. what features do the VFX companies need, that kind of stuff. And I mean, they are adding all of it. Yeah. You know, they have... So, I'm not entirely sure on the Udem support as it stands right now, but I know they just released a new version. Mm-hmm. And there is Udem support somehow. I'm not entirely sure if it's full Udem support yet. Yeah. So, you know, don't take my word on that because I'm not too into it. But what I will say is doesn't matter if you're in games, animation, VFX, commercials, any of these these painter or, or substance tools is an amazing thing to have in your little yeah. uh, pouch of skills. Yeah, it really is. So let's now talk about Mari. Whew. Because Mari yeah. is, is a different beast altogether. So s- substance is, I would say substance is absolutely fantastic it's just kind of the same with with what we talk about with moto as well substance is absolutely fantastic if you want to get up to like 80 percent really really quickly yeah but if you want to go to 100 percent, like true 100 percent, again now we're talking oscar winning <laughs> stuff here uh, mari is really the way to go because mari is uh, mari allows you to have a proper udem support we have another video on that out as well which uh, it just allows you to get into uh, texture resolution, which is literally impossible to get into. Yeah. Like in um, in Mari, if you have a good graphics card, you you can have like a hundred UDIMs per character, and it can run smoothly. Like that's a hundred 4K map per character, per channel. So you might have ten channels. Yeah. You can just do the math there. So that's <laughs> you know that's a hundred 4K maps times like maybe 10 if you have 10 channels here and it's going to run fairly responsive to that yeah so my there's, there's a reason why something like you can run substance on hobby software hobbyist software mm-hmm. but you can't run uh, mari on hobbyist software no. it's it's a different piece like henning says and it's it's the standard in vfx you can definitely make materials in a substance package that you then use to tile across Absolutely. in Mari. That's a really good workflow, actually. Yeah. But Mari and it's it's a, it's a it's a different kind of piece. Yeah, it's um so so this this is Mari 4. So Mari 4 this is the latest version of Mari which came out fairly recently. Uh, Mari allows you to have um, tons of UDIMs here. Like every single map here is one texture map. This is this is a it could be a 4K map an 8K map and you could have like <laughs> A lot of <laughs> lot them of here, them. <laughs> which is is like is not even up for debate. Even you cannot get this in substance, not even close to this. So Mari is fantastic if you have to. Uh, let's just go into the paint tool here. Not going to be a Mari tutorial, but <laughs> Mari is fantastic if you want this pixel right here to be a specific color. Then it's absolutely fantastic if you want this right there to be black then you need Mari. Yeah. And a lot of times you need that. Uh, you don't necessarily, maybe in VFX, you don't necessarily care about the speed as much as you care about the quality. What we care about is that you have ultimate control to, to make these pixels here exactly the same color you want. Yeah, and I guess the the primary difference here where with something like Painter and, and, and Mari is that here everything is stored in the buffer, yeah. then you project it onto your model. Uh, like I said, you could do the same thing in in Painter. It's not that, but Mara is just it's it, this is primarily how it works. So what what Morton is saying here is that currently this is all in a buffer. We're painting on glass here, so this means that this is this doesn't wrap around the model. This is currently on glass, and then we can project it. This is both awesome and infuriating beyond <laughs> anything. Let's say you want to paint um, you want to paint like uh, his finger here. You're gonna see that claw this crocodile finger you can see that we're gonna <laughs> get <crocodile> some <laughs> we get some errors here well if you were to paint this in uh, in something like maybe sea brush even it's actually gonna the brush is gonna conform to the surface yeah there is absolutely no correlation here between what I'm painting and the surface of the model I'm painting on glass and it's being projected onto it which means that 
it's a lot slower to hand paint, I find, in Mari, compared to something like Substance. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm painting masks, like oftentimes you have to just, you, again, you you paint a mask and you have to make this entire foot here black because this is going to have a separate shader or something to it. I mostly do that honestly in Seaworth sometimes or taking it to Mudbox or something like that just because painting this kind of stuff in Mari is a real pain in the ass. But Mari is also the most powerful, undisputed king of texturing if you want 100% quality. Like that is... Like that is not up for debate either. Yeah. Like if you if you want one hundred percent, you have to use Mari for that. But turns out most people don't need to one hundred percent for <laughs> most things. Getting up to 80 percent is is more than enough. Or maybe that you can get to one hundred percent of certain objects. Like this is something I've been talking to people. Like be like, look around a room. Where do you need crazy textures? Like we have like a Wacom pen. I'm holding the Wacom pen right now. Do you need 60 <laughs> UDIMs for that and crazy stuff? No. This is enough to, um, it's enough to just apply a smart material on it and just maybe add a little breakup to it. Yeah. So Mari is, if you need a hero character where you are this close up to it on screen in the cinema <laughs> and Steven Spielberg is watching and is critiquing it. Yeah. You can't be like, you can't have seams or anything or like you can't, you can't have blurry textures or whatnot. You need perfect control. So that's really where Mari is, is being used. And I mean, can you get a job with Mari? Most definitely. Yes. As, as a texture artist, you need to know Mari. Yeah, you, you absolutely need to know Mari. Like if you're, if you, well, at least if you're applying for film or commercial, yeah. you, uh, you need Mari. Just because we do require that control. Well, Substance is used, like Morton said before, like that's, that's used a lot in games today. Mm -hmm. So it is starting to to, to be become more and more popular in, in film, definitely, because they are making a big effort to update the software. Yeah. So I would definitely say learn both. Yeah. If you can. I would say I would say learn both because, like I said, Mari is smart. Oh, sorry, Substance is smart while Mari is dumb. And again, don't interpret that as good or bad. It just means <laughs> it can do stuff automatically and not automatically. Yeah. So you can totally get a base in. Uh, make a base of with materials in uh, Substance Designer and paint this up in Substance Painter and then use this as a basis to really go crazy on your on your on your textures in in Mari. That that's that's a workflow which has been used in film for hmm, maybe definitely. a few years now. Yeah. So that's an incredibly powerful way of working. So with all this said, I hope this has been a fairly it's been a fairly long, but uh, hopefully a very informative <laughs> session on this. I don't know how unbiased all of it was. No, but, you know it's it's hard to be unbiased when you know thing more about some things and use some yeah, things. Absolutely. But hope it gives you a good idea at yeah. least of where to start with whatever field you want to get into. Yeah.